Hallelujah. Father, we thank you this morning. Lord, you're here in this place. We thank you, God, because you woke us up this morning. Lord, we thank you for your new mercies today, God. We thank you for your grace and your mercy every day, Lord. God, we thank you for another week. We thank you for another worship service. God, we thank you for praise and thanksgiving that's in our heart now, God. We know that you're God, and besides you, Lord, there is no other. We thank you for all your blessings that you have bestowed upon us, oh God, down through the years, Lord. We thank you for during this time, how you're with us, how you're keeping us, dear God. But God, we realize that there are many, Lord, uh, many are fainting, many are becoming discouraged, uh, many are about to give up, oh God. Uh, but we thank you because you told us, Lord, if we endure, if we hold out, God, endure see, do season, we will reap the good. And we thank you, Lord. We stand in the gap now for those that are hurting, those that are crying, those, oh God, hallelujah, at the crossroad, not knowing where to go or what to do, God. So many woke up this morning and they asked the question in their heart, Lord, how long? When, oh God, deliverance will come. When the joy will come in the morning. God, we are standing here now. We are crying out to you for that man, that woman, that boy, and that girl, dear Lord. The checks will stop coming in. Unemployment ran out, God. Oh, God, disability is not being passed, oh, God. Many are grieving, oh, God. But here we are at your throne. God, you told us we can come boldly to your throne. And God, not to be anxious for anything, but all things with prayer and supplication and thanksgiving in our heart, dear God. We can let our request, Lord, be made known unto your God. I'm standing, oh, God. I'm lifting, oh, God. Those up to you right now, Lord, um, that are waiting on you, Lord, um, that are looking to you, Lord. Um, hallelujah. God, we thank you. Hallelujah. For we that are called by your name. Uh, God, you have given us, oh God, uh, the power and the authority, Lord, to make things, to help things to happen, dear Lord. Um, because you said in your word of your people, oh God, um, if we would do, oh God, what you told us to do, uh, God, you said you will do. Um, and we believe your word. Um, we stand on your word. Um, we trust your word uh, because you are God. Um, you are sovereign. You are loving. Um, you are kind. Um, you're almighty, hallelujah. You're a gracious God, I'm a merciful God, yeah, yeah, yeah. a forgiving God, I'm hallelujah, long suffering God. I'm and we praise you today, God, hallelujah. We thank you for your word that will come forth, I'm the word, hallelujah, that will deliver someone today, the word, oh God, I'm that will stir up hope in someone today, God. I'm we love you. We praise you, God. We thank you for your presence right now. We thank you for this heavenly atmosphere. God, we love you. We praise you. Bless everyone, oh God, that will hear your word today, even that will listen to your music, oh God. To those that will listen to the words of the songs. God, there is deliverance, hallelujah, in your word. Hallelujah, written word, the word in the song. However it come, God, we receive it today. Hallelujah, we hold it close to us, dear God. We love you, Lord. Thank you for moving by your spirit right now all over this universe. God, you're doing great and mighty things, oh God. We know, God, we have that assurance. We love you, Lord. We praise you. We thank you. Hallelujah. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen and amen.
Good morning, Grace family. The second Sunday in Advent is about preparation. Isaiah the 40th, chapter 3 through 5, verses. A voice of one calling, In the wilderness prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be raised up, every mountain and hill made low. The rough ground shall become level, the, rough, the rugged places a plain, and the glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all people will see it together. For, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. What this means to me is that God will help you see through any situation. Just believe. Thank you, Grace Family. Well, good morning and welcome to Grace Reformed Episcopal Church Digital Worship Experience. I am Lady T, and on behalf of our pastor, Pastor Tori Jermaine Lifridge, and the entire Grace family, we welcome you, and we're so excited that you are worshiping with us on today. Now here at Grace, we are committed to connecting to all creation with love, compelled to cultivating all connections with grace, and conditioned to confronting all circumstances with hope. And we know that in this month of December, we usually greet one another by saying, Merry Christmas! And that's exciting. You know, we start shopping and we decorate our homes, but let us remember that Jesus is the reason for the season. It is love that sent Christ here for the remission of our sins. And we thank God for all that God did. But we also know that Jesus taught us how to learn, how to trust God in difficult situations, even how to pray. So on today, we ask that you will prepare yourself for this service. But when the service is over, take the time out and maybe reach out to someone who may be grieving in this time. During this pandemic, so many people have lost loved ones. And we just thank God that the love of God is something that you can share with someone else. It's priceless, it's necessary, and we know that we need it in times such as this. You ready for worship? I'm ready. Let's go. Burdens you have carried. 
Speak. 
you know, I had no no intention of preaching today because I was on E. Empty. Um, and even though I knew I was empty with regard to preaching, I thank God for his spirit that said, go and participate. Go and sit in the space and trust that the space that has always been your go-to will still be there. And that's why I'm most grateful because as we sit here in a majority empty church, the Spirit of God is here. We know that the sanctuary, we are the living sanctuary, but there is something about the gathered assembly that when we get together, transformation is possible. That you can come into a space empty and feeling broken and feeling far and disconnected from God, but in the midst of two or three, a few who allow themselves to be on one accord in the Spirit of God. God has a way of moving. God has a way of reimagining what that space could be, allowing us to creep into that intimate holies of holies where God, God is the only source that could actually heal in that moment. And that's why I'm grateful for the sanctuary. And bigger than that, I'm grateful for all of you who are here. Some are doing what we need to do just to keep church going. But I'm thankful for those of you who are doing this because this is an outpouring of your own intimate relationship with God. This is what you know God requires of you. And we serve a God who does require much. God requires much from us. And there is no way to get to God and bypass the journey. And that is where I know I'm struggling. Struggling because I know what God has shown. I know what God has said. I know what God has given. But yet in the midst of being engaged in that journey, you can still feel disconnected from God. Disconnected to the point that you almost feel like you're being devoured by forces other than God. I saw, I had no word for the day, but there was an image that I saw this week that stayed on my heart. And I got up this morning and I said, okay, God, you know, what is it? Give me a scripture, something, lead me. God, I had nothing Nothing, absolutely nothing but this image. And I saw it on Facebook, and it stuck in my spirit, and now I understand. <laughs> it was an image of a snake that was devouring a frog alive. And the frog was trying to escape the clutches of the serpent. And every time the frog would try and move out, the snake would reassert its grip, his grip from his mouth on the frog. And, and the frog, the snake only had the frog by the leg. But then every time the frog would fight, the snake would just try and anchor in a little further, anchor in the frog. And, and before you knew it, the snake had most of the frog in its mouth. And then a split second later, the frog was inside the snake, alive. And I said, well, God, why are you making this thing stay in my spirit? And one of the things that I know now as I see as we were experiencing worship this now, I feel like I know exactly what that frog was feeling. When you are still trying to be about your father's business, but 
because we are still fully human, still fully flawed, still trying to grapple and wrestle with what does it mean to live a life of faithfulness and dedication to God? How do you be faithful to God trying to commit to the things of God when you don't even have enough time to do things for yourself? How do you deny yourself and give your whole life to God? That's easy to say, but how do you live that every single day? How do you say, God, for you I live and for you I die? How do you say, God, not my will, but your will be done? How do you say, God, in spite of how I feel, whatever you desire of me, here I give myself away to you. How do you do that? In the midst of living in a world where serpents can grapple and almost seemingly devour you whole and alive. I thought about that thing and I, I looked at that frog and I know that that frog, it was it for the frog. But in worship, God led me to one of my favorite psalms. And it's Psalm 91. And I usually deal with the beginning of that psalm, but today I just want to lift verses 14 through 16, the end of the psalm. Those who love me, I will deliver. I will protect those who know my name. When they call to me, I will answer them. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue them and honor them. With long life, I will satisfy them and show them my salvation. Let us pray. Oh God, may the words from my mouth and the collective meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, oh God, for you're indeed our rock, our strength, and our salvation. And for that, we say thank you. Now, God, speak. Speak, God. Speak, Lord. Speak, Lord. Speak, God. Speak. For we are listening. You have our undivided attention. It's in your name we pray. And we say amen. Those who love me, I will deliver. I will protect those who know my name. When they call to me, I will answer them. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue them and honor them. With long life, I will satisfy them and show them my salvation. I don't think it's by chance that this is where God has placed us on today. Because it is the salvation of God that we desperately need. But at the same time, how many of us know that it is also the salvation of God that we often run from? That we never actually really tap into. Because we are so used to having to deal with things on our own. We're so used to having to shoulder the burden, shoulder the responsibility. We're so used to having to be those who have it together, who, who aren't never really fully broken, who aren't never really fully in de desperate need of God. And because of that, we lean onto our own understanding by nature. And because of that, when we get into those moments where we feel the press and we feel the burden and we feel the stress and we feel the weight of God's assignment, how often do we turn to our own devices, even though we have scripture that tells us to lean not onto our own understanding, but to trust in God in all of our ways. It is difficult to live the truth of the gospel. It is difficult to live the truth of scripture. It is difficult to live the truth of faith, even when we are, especially when we are in the front of circumstances that seem like it can crush us. That's why I love the psalmist. I love the psalms. I love how we can connect to the psalm, not because it makes sense, but because we have a little experience. 
See, oftentimes we want to avoid moments like this. None of us want to be at the brink of feeling like we want to throw in the towel. None of us want to own up and admit that there are moments when we have no answers, when we have no idea what to do, when we don't know where to turn, when we don't know where deliverance will come from, when we don't know how in the world God can rescue, when we don't know how in the world can prayers get answered, when we don't know any of that, we try to avoid this moment. But we'll never know the other side of that with God if we don't ever get into these places because of God, if we don't follow God and allow the experience with God to lead us to paths where only God can deliver. We got to be broken out of our own self-dependence. Oh, my God, I know we live in a culture and in a country where where self-dependence and self-reliance is what we are building ourselves. You got to pull yourself up by your own bootstrap. But let me be the first to tell you today, there are places in my life, in my God journey, where I don't have the strength, I don't have the know-how, I don't have the mechanism to pull myself up. Faith will lead you down pathways where you cannot pull yourself out of. If you are in faith and of faith, if you are serious about faith, then God will lead you to places where only God, only God can pull you out. Maybe that's the sermon today, that we need to learn to give in to the place and the point where we have an only God testimony. When we come out of this, only God could have brought me out. Only God could have kept my mind. Only God could have made a way. Only God could have given me strength. Only God could have kept me moving. Only God. Only God. The psalmist says, Let me leave you with these words. If you ever get there, and maybe this sermon ain't for everybody today, but Lord knows it's for me. If you've ever been there, if you've never been there, I dare you, try God. When he shows you, try God. When he drops something in your spirit, try God. When something pops into your mind that seems like it's impossible, try God. When he tells you to do an assignment that seems like it's too big for you, try God. Try God and see what God can do in your life. And if you get there, hear the words of the psalmist as reminders. Because when you allow yourself to become overwhelmed, you can do good and still be distant from God. You can do good work and never still call on the name of God. And you know, sometimes I can only testify for myself. I tell you, I keep it real. I share my journey not so that you can be like me, but so that you can hopefully be inspired to connect with God for yourself. But there are times when I know I don't talk to God. You know why? Not because I I don't think God is there, but there's a part of me, a real human flesh part of me that I can't control that's telling my flesh, myself, that God should not have put you in this situation. What kind of God would call you to do that? What kind of God would ask that of you? What kind of God would ask you to do such an assignment? The same kind of God who would call his son to die as part of ministry. Will you die for me? Will you die so that others might have life? Will you sacrifice one for many? Will you give everything you got in order that others who may never know, you never see, you never cross your path, might have a chance at life? That kind of God would inconvenience your life. That kind of God will call you the sacrifice when you have other desires for what you want to do, your resources, your life. That kind of God would say, I know you've been on the path to go one way, but I'm calling you to go another direction. I know my change in your life will cause you to shift everything that you got going on, but I need you over here. And if you would be willing to follow me, I can't guarantee you that it won't hurt. I can't guarantee you that you won't lose. I can't guarantee you that you won't miss some stuff, But what I can assure you is that I will be with you. The psalmist says, if you can believe that, my brother, my sister, that is enough. Those who love me, I will deliver. 
if you love him, he will deliver you. But you got to look at this. He said, those, I will protect those who know my name. See, I, I don't just preach this thing just to be cute or just to be different. I preach it because I believe it. Do you love God? Do you love him? And do you know his name? Not the name that grandma taught you or mama taught you or the pastor in Sunday school tried to teach you. Do you know the name of God for yourself? Do you know what God has shaped your tongue to call him? Do you know God for you? Because if you know him and if you love him, God says, I will deliver you and I will protect you. But what happens when those moments come and you don't feel it? God says, are you still breathing? Because if you're still breathing, that means you haven't been overcome. And if you haven't been overcome, then my word still stands. I will deliver you. I will protect you. I know that I didn't keep you from every harm, but I keep you right now because you still have life and breath. If you love me and if you know me, I will keep you deliver you, and protect you. But he says this one thing, and this is what got me. When they come to me, I will answer them. See, oftentimes, I call to everything else I know except to God. I call to the silence of my own mindset. I call to the distractions of vices. I call to the distractions of voices. I call to the distractions of everything other than what it is that God has been in my life. I don't know about you, but I got to ask God for forgiveness today. God, forgive me for not taking you up on what relationship is. Forgive me, oh God, for not taking you serious when you said you'll never leave us nor forsake us. Forgive me, oh God, for not coming to you as the child that you say that I am. Forgive me, oh God. Because he says, when, when they call, I will answer. Oh, my God. When they call, I will answer. When they cry out, I will answer. I will come to you. I will make myself known. I might not do what you want me to do, but I can promise you I will answer you and assure you that I am with you. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue them and honor them. With long life, I will satisfy them. And this is the part, and I'm done. And I will show them my salvation. My God. See, I, I get it now. I get it, God. God, God trying to take us to Missouri. I believe it's Missouri. Missouri is the show me state. See, oftentimes we get complacent reading about folk who experience and encounter God for themselves. We get satisfied reading about stories of those who learn for themselves about what it meant to be in an intimate connection with God. We, we are, it's enough for us just to go and praise the stories and the testimonies of the, all, all the, the Bible characters that we see. And that's not enough for God. God said, I was God with them and for them, and I am God with and for you. God says, I'm still in the testimony business. I am still still in the delivering business. God says, I want to show you my salvation, but I can't show you my salvation if you never allow yourself to get into places where salvation is necessary. So many of us leave God's salvation on the counter because we won't allow ourselves to get to the place where that salvation is necessary. God is hovering saying, I got the salvation. If you got the faith, if you got the courage, if you are dare enough to step down into the places. God says, don't worry about salvation. I got that on deck. I got salvation in spades, but I need you to get to the place where my salvation becomes activated because it's necessary for you. You don't need salvation when you're playing it safe. You don't need salvation when you got all the answers. You don't need salvation when, when everything is working out in your favor. Salvation becomes necessary when you've got no choice, you've got no answer, you've got no way out, you can't find a door, you can't find a window. That's when salvation is necessary. And God says, if you love me, if you know me, I will show you my salvation.
salvation. You want to know what a testimony looks like? I don't care if you can tell me about God's salvation. I want to know, can you show me? Tell me about the salvation that God has shown you. Can you tell me about when he showed up just when you were at your wits end? When he showed up just when you were about to give up? When he showed up just when you were about to turn back and go back to what you knew and what was safe? Can you tell me about how God showed you God's own salvation so that you and I can continue to be everything that God created and purpose us to be. Listen, my beloved, this is for you. I don't know where you are. If you can look at my sweatshirt, I wasn't planning to preach today. But when you show up in the house of the Lord, you want me to tell you about a testimony? You want me to tell you about what I know? What I know is God's salvation can be shown and can show up at any given moment. I know that you can wake up on a Sunday morning and teach Sunday school and have a great lesson. I know that you can be in the house and see the joy of the Lord on your wife, but feeling like you're miserable and depressed. I know that you can find yourself pressing your way and send the text message to your media team and let them know I ain't preaching today because I'm on E and I ain't got it. I know what it is to follow the unction of God's spirit and show up in the place where you know there will be two or three who got the spirit of God, who love God, who know God, and who are filled with the presence of God. I know what it is to see God say, I know you think that you can't come out of this. I know you think that you are down. I know you think that you are empty. I know you think that you are beyond tired. I know you think that you are overwhelmed. But if you allow yourself to meet me in the place, meet me in the sanctuary, open your spirit and receive my my spirit. God said, let me show you my salvation. My salvation can pick you up when you are down. My salvation can give you joy when you are broken. My salvation will give you clarity when you are confused. My salvation will give you a word when you thought you were empty. God says, I'll show you my salvation if You allow yourself to be put into places where salvation is necessary. Keep stretching. Keep pushing. Keep looking foolish. Keep defying the odds. Keep breaking boundaries. Keep walking. Keep talking. Keep declaring. Keep believing. Keep speaking. Keep prophesying. Keep playing. Keep using the gifts. Keep praying. Keep doing whatever God has called you to do. And watch. Watch. Watch the salvation of God in your life. My brother, my sister, receive the salvation of God today. Not as a formula, but allow yourself You want to see God's salvation? Say yes to going where God is leading you. Say yes to going where you're not comfortable. Say yes to becoming who God has purposed you to be. Say yes to taking the road less traveled. Say yes to doing the things that nobody else understands. Say yes. Watch God's salvation meet you at every point when you need it most doors of the church are open today. We extend a relationship not to us, not to me, not to church, but to God. Say yes to God. God has a way of orchestrating what you need without you even understanding what's on deck. That's what I'm testifying. Excuse me, that's what I'm testifying to today. The same God who allows those who see your work, your stretch, your faith, even your brokenness. will allow those to be the ones at the right time, at the right place, 
when you need it most to show you the salvation of God. That's what we offer to you, my brother, my sister. It ain't magic. It ain't just some formula. It is a relationship with God. If that's you and you don't know what that relationship is, looks like, feels like, all we ask, all God asks, just say yes. Yes. Yes, God. I want that. I, I, I want the testimony that I'm hearing right now. I want the testimony that's connecting with my spirit right now. Yes, God. I want that. That's all you need to do. Let God do the rest. I ain't asking you to stop doing one thing that you're doing. I ain't asking you to, to, to not go places where you've been going. I ain't asking you to cut off nobody. I ain't saying none of that. Just say yes to God. Let God begin to nurture you. Let God begin to curate your life. Let God begin to shape your path as only God can. And don't walk this journey by yourself. If you're saying yes, inbox us. Facebook, hit us, call us. Reach out because there is a community of people. Of people, let me tell you, ain't none of us got it all together. But I thank God we allow the Spirit of God to flow and connect that when I am weak oh my god there are few folks who are strong oh when they are weak hopefully they got a pastor who is in a season of strength that's what this community is all about if God is leading you to unite with this fellowship then say yes to that so that we can walk with you in this journey of faith come on let's go to God in prayer oh God it is for grace that we come unto you right now thank you for meeting us Thank you for showing us your salvation. Thank you for redeeming us from the places where we wanted to give up on you. Thank you for reminding us that even at the end of our stretching, when we think we got nothing else, thank you for showing us that there is still yet more in you when we allow ourselves to be faithful to you, oh God. Thank you for all the rams and the bushes that you've placed in our journey. Thank you for all of those who are being obedient in their walks and not even understanding how they participate in your salvation showing up. Thank you for the gift of community. Now, oh God, for those who are saying yes, God, help us to walk with them so that it is a yes from their soul that they have a community, oh God, to help them walk out. We love you, oh God. We trust you. We believe you. We celebrate you. We honor you, O oh God. It's in your holy and precious name we pray. And we say amen, amen, amen. Listen, as we close out this service, I mean it. I mean it. I always share, I try my best to be as vulnerable and transparent. I'm not, I don't always do it well. But there are moments where I believe that that is what this, this call, this role is supposed to be. It's not for me to just tell you what you got to do. It's for me to be able to show you what it looks like. Not for you to be like me, but for you to be inspired to be just as close, just as connected to God for yourself. So that when you have those moments, when you feel distant and far from God, that God has your rams in the bush that will ignite moments where God shows you for yourself how God will show you his salvation in your life. My brother, my sister, I encourage you, take serious this call. If this is the ministry where God has called you and connected you and is feeding you, then just be a full part. We are a full part of this ministry. We sacrifice together. Not everybody, because oftentimes everybody ain't called to be a full part of this ministry at this season, and that's okay. But if you are, if you are, then be a full part. Sacrifice with us. It's never about amount. It is about what is your sacrifice between you and God. Whatever that is, let us all give it together so that what God has shown, the work that God has called us to, we continue to do. Let us give thanks. God, we thank you for these, your tithes, and our offerings of sacrifice and love. God, we pray that you receive them, bless them, multiply them, so that we might be able to use them for the work that you called us to. 
Help us to be good and faithful stewards over everything you so graciously give unto us. It's in your holy and precious name we pray. And we say amen, amen. Thank God for allowing you to worship with us on today. It is our prayer that something transpired in this service to bring you to a closer, more personal, intimate connection and relationship with God. And let us close our service by singing together our closing song, Praise God from Whom All Blessings Flow. forever bless and always keep us may he always raise his countenance and allow his face to forever shine upon us may that same God continue to remind us to live boldly to faith forward and to always love unconditionally from now until we meet again on the other side where the sun neither rises nor sets for the sun is Jesus the Christ who's in the light of the world it's in his name that we pray let all of God's children say Draw.